This is Professor Russell James coming to you from Texas Tech University. Welcome to today's lecture from Visual Plan Giving, an introduction to the law and taxation of charitable gift planning. Welcome to Charitable Gifts of Homes and Farms with Retained Life Estates, Part 4, Calculating the Deduction for a Home. This is Professor Russell James. Calculating the deduction for a charitable gift of a remainder interest in a house is more complicated than calculating the deduction for a remainder interest in farmland. The deduction for a remainder interest in a house will be less than the deduction for a remainder interest in farmland of the same value. This is because farmland does not wear out or depreciate. In contrast, houses over time wear out. This expectation of the wearing out or depreciation of the house must be incorporated in the estimation of the amount of value that the charity will receive at the end of the life of the donor slash measuring life. Returning to our previous example, suppose that the 59-year-old donor gave a remainder interest in a $100,000 personal residence rather than a remainder interest in $100,000 of farmland. The deduction for the gift of the personal residence remainder interest would be less than for the farmland remainder interest. That is $71,057 for the farmland versus only $48,153 for the home. How is this deduction calculated? Part of the value of the personal residence is the value of the land on which the residence sits. The deduction for this part of the personal residence is calculated exactly like the deduction for the farmland. Thus, the remainder interest gift generates a deduction of 71.057% of the value of the land underlying the personal residence. The 71.057% comes from the calculation process for farmland described in a previous lecture. There is also presumed to be an element of the house that does not depreciate, which is referred to as salvage value. Because this salvage value does not depreciate, it is also deducted at the same percentage as the land. In other words, 71.057%. The remaining value of the residence, however, is presumed to depreciate. Consequently, this portion of the value of the residence may not be deducted at the full 71.057% used for farmland, but must be reduced by a depreciation reduction factor. In this case, using the example described a bit later, the depreciation reduction factor is 0 0.32720, or 32.72%. Thus, the depreciable part of the residence may be deducted at 38.337%. In other words, this is 71.057% less 32.720%. Combining the parts that can be deducted at 38.337% with the parts that can be deducted at 71.057% results in the total deduction of $48,153 for the $100,000 home. How is this depreciation reduction factor calculated? The calculation can at first seem to be complex or overwhelming, but, but actually it is simply a matter of copying the correct numbers into a division problem. Aside from the information located in the IRS Table C of Publication 1459 and the Section 7520 rate, the only additional information needed is the age of the donor slash measuring life and the useful life of the house. Unlike other areas of tax law where depreciation is incorporated into tax calculations, there are no set years for the depreciable life of a residence in this context. The useful life of the house should be estimated by an appraiser or engineer. The IRS examples use 45 years for the useful life of a house, and so this is often treated as a viable estimation depending upon the condition of the home. Following the cue from the IRS example for this type of deduction, suppose that the residence will depreciate over 45 years. This, along with the Section 7520 interest rate and the donor's age, is the only information needed to use the IRS tables to complete the calculation. Following the instructions of IRS Publication 1459, download Table C and scroll down to the segment titled with 
interest at 1.6%, or whatever the appropriate Section 7520 rate is for the date of the transaction. The numerator of the depreciation reduction factor is the R factor at the donor's age minus the R factor at the donor's age after the useful life of the house, assuming the donor is the measuring life for the retained life estate. In this case, the numerator is the R factor at age 59 minus the R factor at age 104. In other words, the age 59 measuring life plus the 45 year useful life of the house. If the life tenant's age plus the useful life of the house exceeds 109, which is the highest number on the table, simply use zero for the R factor at the donor's age after the useful life of the house. When using Table C with a 1.6% Section 7520 rate, this makes the numerator 510,527.3 minus 77.95371, or 510,449.34629. The denominator of the depreciation reduction factor is the D factor at the donor's age multiplied times the useful life of the house. In this case, the denominator is the D factor at age 59 multiplied by 45, or 34,667.69 times 45, which equals 1,560,046.05. Combining the numerator and denominator results in 510,449.34629 divided by 1,560,046.05 or 0 0.32720. This is the depreciation reduction factor used in the previous calculation. In other words, this is how much less the percentage deduction for the depreciable portion will be as compared with the land portion. In this example, the land portion can be deducted at 71.057%. The depreciable portion must be deducted at 32.720% less. In other words, it must be deducted at 38.337%. The process of plugging in the R factor and D factor numbers and then subtracting this result from the remainder interest factor in order to get the factor to apply to the depreciable part of the home is a shortcut to getting the result generated by the formula found in the actual IRS regulations. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut method for calculating the remainder interest factor to be applied to the depreciable portions of the personal residence if the life estate is for more than one life. If the calculation for the remainder interest factor to be applied to the depreciable portions of a two-life remainder interest gift appears too daunting, you may request the IRS to furnish this factor to you. To do so requires that you are dealing with an actual contribution, not simply a proposal, and that you forward the sex and date of birth of each life tenant, copies of the relevant instruments, and a statement of the estimated useful life of the depreciable property to the Commission of Internal Revenue, attention OP colon E colon EP colon A colon 1, Washington, D.C. 20224. A donor may also choose to give a remainder interest in a personal residence where the donor will retain the right to use the property or give that right to someone else for a fixed number of years. For example, the donor could deed a personal residence to a charity with the provision that the donor retains the right to use the property for 20 years. In this case, the deduction is based upon the projected value of the personal residence in 20 years. The current land and salvage value of the building are not depreciable, and so they are assumed to be worth the same amount in 20 years as they are today. The depreciable part of the personal residence will be reduced in value by the fixed number of years divided by the useful life of the building. For example, if a $100,000 residence was estimated to have a useful life of 45 years with 
land value of $20,000 and salvage value of $10,000, then in 20 years, the estimated value would be the land of $20,000 plus the salvage value of $10,000 plus the depreciable building of $70,000 minus the depreciation of $70,000 multiplied by 20 divided by 45 or a total of $68,888.89. Based on the idea that the charity is projected to receive an item of property worth $68,888.89 in 20 years, the deduction for such a transfer would be $68,888.89 multiplied by the remainder interest factor for a term certain of 20 years. These remainder interest factors are published in Table B, Term Certain Factors, available for download at the IRS website. For a 20-year term when the Section 7520 rate was 1.6% at the time of the gift, the remainder factor would be 0.727991. Thus, the deduction for the transfer of this future interest in the personal residence would be $68,888.89 multiplied by 0.727991, or $50,150.49. Finally, if the value of the land may be reduced by depletion of its natural resources, for example, valuable mineral rights, the expected depletion must be taken into consideration in estimating the value of the charity's remainder interest, although no specific methodology is mandated. This has been Charitable Gifts of Homes and Farms with Retained Life Estates, Part 4, Calculating the Deduction for a Home. Join us next time for Charitable Gifts of Homes and Farms with Retained Life Estates, Part 5, Rules After the Gift is Made.